Hello, good day everyone. Welcome to Vet Micro 516, or Veterinary Food Safety and Hygiene. So, I am Dr. John Cladden B. I will be your lecturer for this course this semester. So, for this course, um, first we will be discussing, of course, for the first week, or during this week, there will be an introductory part of the course. So, we will be discussing introduction to food hygiene and microorganisms in food. Um, Next, we will tackle foodborne illnesses in the next the succeeding weeks, then introduction to meat hygiene, pre the pre-slaughter phase, the anti-mortem inspection, um, hygienic slaughter of animals. So I just put an asterisk here for mental health mental health and reading break. So let's see if I, I will not promise this to you, but let's just see if we can make this happen. So after the mid then that will be the coverage of your midterms. Then for the uh, post midterm term, you have your PM or the post-mortem meat inspection considerations after slaughter, the hygienic um, hygiene of milk, dairy products, eggs and egg products, and fish, and hygiene of honey. Then, after that, we will look into sanitation and cleaning as well as the, and lastly, the HACCP principles. Then, of course, we will have your midterm exams after. So, for the grading system, again, we will just use the um, what is what we do in the college? So for the midterm, 33%. For the final term, not final grade, the final term, 67%. And for your lecture, um, I'm sure you're familiar with the many gamut usually, is that we will have assessments um which is constitute 20% of your term grade. And of course, your one hour in your midterm or final exam. Then similar lang naman siya for your final term. And of course, in this course, kasi ako naman yung laboratory instructor niyo, you will have different laboratory exercises, of course, which, which I will probably grade from 1 to 5, then it will be summed and averaged. And for this course, I will strictly implement the college policy of 75% passing for this course. So now, um, why is there a need for food safety and food hygiene in the veterinary curriculum? So, let's see. First, let's check the World Health Organization data. So. According to them, the World Organization, 1 out of 10 people actually fall sick due to foodborne diseases. So this may be due, most often due to contaminated food articles. And it has been noted that there are 420,000 deaths yearly. And of the cases and deaths, children are most likely to be at higher risk. 40% of cases and around more than 125,000 deaths per year. So, malaking impact ang foodborne diseases with regards to human health worldwide. And what does these diseases do? Sometimes they are diarrheal diseases, they cause kidney and liver dysfunction, nervous dysfunctions, arthritis, cancers, and death. So, based on this data, we can clearly see that there is an importance in the study of food safety and hygiene with regards to preserving human health. So what is food safety and or food hygiene? So according to the Hygiene Food Sanitation Organization, so it is defined as the handling, preparing, storing of food or drink in a best way that reduces the risk of consumers becoming sick from foodborne disease. The principle of food safety, it aims, basically what is the aim, is to prevent food from becoming contaminated or to cause food poisoning. So, sa madaling sabi, the main goal of food safety and or hygiene is to keep food fresh and make it, um, keep it safe so that people consuming it will not get sick. Another definition presented by Parapelde is that food hygiene is defined as the measures and conditions necessary to control, take note, control hazards and to ensure fitness for human consumption of foodstuff, taking into account its intended use. So, this is not a, with the main goal of keeping food safe and not um, letting it go bad or not allowing it to cause human disease, foodborne diseases, um, the main goal is to control hazards and to ensure that the food is fit for human consumption, so thus it is safe. It is not precious, it is safe, and it will not get you sick. So as a broad field of science, what does food safety and or hygiene cover? So it includes proper handling of food and drink intended for human consumption. Yes, I know, and the definition, previously mentioned definition. Maintenance of raw food quality for farm, from farm. So 
Parm or Abatual to Processing Areas. Of course, you need to keep that too. Then Assurance of Quality from Processing Site. So from Parm to Abatual to Processing Site, quality must be checked. And proper handling of utensils and apparatus used in preparation. So kitchen home base na ito. And maintenance of clean and personal habits of those that are involved in food preparation. So from farmers to abattoir workers to processing workers to people cooking food at home. So basically, food in food hygiene or food safety, we, we intend to keep food quality from farm to fork. Yun nga, yung the coverage that I have mentioned kanina. So, it involves the entire food chain from food production or in our case, animal production for food, production of food animals rather. Then, to processing, abattoir or whatever, packaging processing, the packaging, the logistics, the delivery of these food items to distributors, so farmer's market, the, mar the public market, the groceries, uh, are the conditions there safe for food and of course when we go to buy them we must prepare them properly for them not to be contaminated or for them not to cause illnesses and to keep us healthy and of course food waste how do we how do we dispose of food waste which in which which in turn actually affects the entire food chain so in food safety or food hygiene we tend or we intend rather to keep food quality um high or keep food safe fit for human consumption actually from farm to fork. So in this diagram actually you can say you can see the plot of it is plotted na yung food chain process natin from so and you can see here from both sides that there are um, biological and chemical hazards that may affect the quality of food um, at different stages of the production cycle. So it could be again mga pathogens as shown here pathogens, contaminants, fecal cross-contamination, mga foodborne pathogens in different, in the different parts of the production cycle, or it could be harmful chemicals or hazards such as ito, mga pesticides, mga growth promoters, tranquilizers, etc. that could actually alter the quality of the food. So, this um, diagram clearly show that we veterinarians who are perhaps engage in food safety or food hygiene has a role from farm to fork. So we need to keep our animal, at least our animals for animal production that are intended for food to be consumed as food. It needs to be safe and it, it needs to be nutritious and at the same time it needs to be safe from farm to fork. So now that we have actually defined what is food safety and, and or hygiene, what does it cover of, you know, from farm to fork, let's move to the basics of food microbiology. Again, I, I need not remind you that food is perishable. Ang pagkain will go bad if you allow it to go bad. Because food is a good media for microbial growth and persistence. So this may be due to spoilage bacteria, fungi, or other, um, other causes such as um, parasites perhaps. And of course, when you consume spoiled food, inevitably per, you will succumb to foodborne illnesses. So what's, what's the main goal? One of the main goals of food safety and hygiene is the need to produce food that are free of pathogenic, again, highlight pathogenic microbial contaminants. Or basically, keep bad food pathogens at bay. Question is, how? Redon Ramsey is angry. Salmonella is not an ingredient. It's one of the memes that perhaps encapsulate what, what, what you are trying to do here in food hygiene. So now let's go to spoilage. I think I need not be specific on this, but I already know napapanis ang food if it becomes spoiled. So what is this? So food spoilage is any undesired change in the natural color or taste or texture of food items that make it unfit for human consumption, as it has lost its quality or nutrition and nutritional value. So these are changes to occur in food that make them unsuitable to be consumed or make them nutrition make their nutritional value less. 
So raw meat is subjected to change by its own enzyme and microbial action and its fat may be oxidized chemically. So these are some of the examples of biochemical changes that may naturally happen to raw meat if you allow, if you allow such changes to, to go on and spoilage to occur. So what are these what are these factors that influence uh, microbial invasion of food? So the load got load of gut of the animal. So this is a factor wherein kung madaming uh, madaming microbes contain ang gut ng animal or madaming microbes in the body of the animal to start with. For example, due to unhygienic food production process food production processes, you can expect that the meat the egg, the milk, or whatever product that comes from that animal has high microbial load too. Second, the physiological condition of the animal immediately after before slaughter. So, the best, um, the best condition for animals for slaughter is to is for them to be calm. But because if they are excited or feverish or is under infected, pala before slaughter bacteria is more likely to enter tissue because of the immune response. Compromised immune system, perhaps, kasi nga may sakit. Third, is method of killing and bleeding. So, this is important because basically this is abattoir or um, slaughterhouse hygiene. No matter how hard one as, as a food check, as a production veterinary, no matter how hard you try, to keep your food animals safe and limit the micro microbes that they contain, if they are slaughtered in unsanitary conditions, expect that the meat that comes from those animals will have high numbers of microbes and potentially pathogenic ones at that. And second is the rate of rate of cooling, um, wherein rapid cooling will reduce the rate of invasion of tissues. This is a function of storage and or I mean, uh, cooling or chilling because when you chill when you chill food rapidly you do not allow let's say if you, you come you buy meat from the supermarket and you put it you wash it and you put it put it immediately in your fridge um the rate invasion will be reduced but if you allow your um meat to just stay on your the counter of your kitchen before you put it in in your refrigerator na kasi nakalimutan mo then expect that the microbes that are initially there in the meat will be able to multiply our of high or are of high concentration. Now we have established that microbes in food in excess is bad for keep, um, keeping the food safe for human consumption. Now let's go through what are these types of microbes that are commonly found in food actually there are three so molds yeasts and bacteria so first we'll go to discuss molds so of course you've gone through your bacteriology and mycology so you know molds are fungi with filaments and hyphae as shown here spergillus the green one for juice or the mycelium rather <clears throat> They are fuzzy or cottony in appearance and they reproduce using spores, you know, these small ones. So, factors that affect their growth is um, that fungi would often, um, often require or grow best when they are at room temp, so 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. But they can also grow at near freezing temperature. And the pH is somewhat um, acidic, so pH is near, below or near 6. Dry conditions such as ito, bread, bread na freshly baked or stale bread rather, dry conditions actually um, promote their growth. And for meat, high atmospheric, humid atmosphere rather, and temperatures near freezing temp or near 0 degrees Celsius is actually um, conducive to development of molds. So what are these molds that are often found in meat? They have Cladosporium, Zeotrichum, Sporotrichum, Nucor, and Thumbing Tube. So what happens when you allow aerobic growth of molds in your food items, or especially in your meat? So it develops stickiness. So the incipient growth of mold makes the surface of the meat sticky to touch. May mga madikit-dikit siya. Number two, it develops whiskers. Ito mga white fuzzy stuff. Basically, it's, it is the mycelium of the um, mold. 
fuzzy growth that can be caused by non remotes, including thanidium, mucor, rhizopus, and others. Block spot, which can be caused by the mycelium or cladosporum herbarum. White spot, spogotrichum, carnis, and geotrichum. Green patches, ay na, penicillium, din sa bread kanina, green, na different penicillium species. Then the composition of fat. Um, the fat becomes rancid, so many molds have like bases and they cause hydrolysis of fat. So they are able to digest fat. And of course, when there is mold, nag-iiba ang lasa, nag-iiba ang amoy. So of odors and of taste. So molds, um, they give musty flavor to meat in the vicinity of their growth. So may amoy talaga siya. So sometimes these changes in meat and in smell rather of meat are called taint. So there are defects of uh, defects in meat quality that are due to aerobic growth, aerobic growth of molds. So examples of aerobic growth of molds in meat is development of whiskers. And then uh, green patches, na, green patches in meat that could be due to penicillium. And black mark, mga black spots on meat, which could be due to cladosporium. Of course, the other type of fungi that develops in food are yeasts. So these are compared to molds that have high pay, or mycelium na natin, they are, yeasts are often um, occur in single cell. They are a bit, they are in single cell, being single cell, but they are bigger than bacteria and they reproduce through budding. So, they grow best at room temp, but can grow also in near freezing temperature. So, they are inhibited by temperature that are more than 37 degrees Celsius, so more than body temp. Then they require, com compared to molds that actually prefer dry environments, yeast require water, high water content, but some others are um, grow in dry environments. So, just um, a heads up to those of you who like to eat kimchi that are produced by unlicensed or un unregistered producers, unregistered kimchi, mga homemade, homemade dyan sa online, be careful of seeing this white stuff. Because there are studies that indicate that there, they may be candida yeasts. So, do take note, do be careful with what you eat. So, what happens? when you allow yeast to grow in meats or in other products. So, surface line, shown here, of course, discolorations, yeah. changes in odor and taste, and not paint, as previously mentioned, then you fat decomposition because yeast, much like a mold, also are able to decompose fat, making it rancid. And last, but certainly not the least, of the food uh, microbes in food are Bacteria. So these are, as you may know, are single cell organisms. So these are required. They differ in size, of course. And they are very, very small, obviously. And being small, with regards to food hygiene and safety, they are easily transferred by hands, pests, and fomites. And because they are very, very small, again, their presence is not obvious until too many has developed hindi mo na napapansin na mayroon palang bacterial contaminants until it's too late. Until it is, until the food is, panis na. So, reproduction is through binary fission. So, ayun na, one nagiging two. So, basically, there is a lower rhythmic increase every time that a bacteria is um, reproducing or they are, or bacterial growth results to lower rhythmic increase in numbers, right? So the generation time or the time from um you know that time for the binary fission to occur actually the generation time most often for um foodborne bacteria are less than 20 minutes so imagine that and you have to take note that low temp slows down the growth that's why preemp ko lang that's why we put our food in the fridge so just a recap of your bacteriology, <laughs> I think you should know this, or you should have known this. There are four phases of bacterial growth. So you have your lag phase, the log phase, and the stationary, the stationary phase, and the death phase. 
So the log phase, sa lag phase, um, the bacteria is just adjusting to the environment. So what's occurring here? Cell, um, yung mga cell damages are repaired. The bacteria is adapting and trying to utilize uh, nutrients that are found in its medium. And once it is adapted, they go through, they, they undergo exponential growth or the log phase. Yeah, they number are rapidly increasing again logarithmic increase and in number that is the key for bacterial growth then it reaches a, a time wherein the number of bacteria that are growing or are being produced or reproduced rather is at the same rate as the number of bacteria that are dying so it becomes the number becomes uh, the number plateaus so that's the stationary phase and of course, when the nutrients are already declining or it has already been used, majority of the nutrients in the media, of course, the bacteria will die in natural death in the death phase. So now, with regards to food hygiene, and uh, food hygiene and food safety, I would like to inform you <laughs> that when your food is already spoiled or is already na ferment na, ferment if it's needed to be fermented or spoiled na or sira na siya, it may, it may be that the bacteria, the bacterial growth phase is on the stationary phase or stationary phase already. Now, to ensure the quality of food, you need to avoid spoilage and how do you do that? So, within the lens of food microbiology, we need to lengthen the log phase, we need to keep the microbe count low. Second, we need to hinder the log phase or the exponential growth phase. As much as possible, wag na natin silang padamihin. So what? how do we do that? So we subject microbes to unfavorable situations. That's why we cook them, we irradiate them sometimes and we avoid contamination again to keep the microbe count low so again for food safety reasons we need to lengthen the log phase the adaptation phase at the same time we need to stop them from progressing to the log phase so with regards to food safety and hygiene and within the four phases of microbial growth or development, the log, the lag, and the log phases are important. So there are several factors affecting bacterial growth in food and number one of which is initial number. So this, this basically talks about the extent of initial contamination. If you can remember the spoilage, the spoilage slide kanina, the number one factor uh, stated there is the extent of um, microbial contamination in the gut. So basically, it's still the initial numbers of the animal, initial number of the animal or the food. So what it, it is a limiting factor with regards to storing time. So again, high number of microbes from the start limits storing time. So as an example, if meat, for example, is stored at 5 degrees Celsius, which is chilling, chilling temperature, and there are more than 100,000 bacterial cells per centimeter. Um, less than one week, the meat will only be safe for contamination and stored, um, safe for contamination after storage of less than one week, and the meat will start to develop slime. Whereas, if, if it at the same condition, if there are only 100 cells per centimeter, the meat can last in storage for more than two weeks enough. And within that time, it can still be eaten. It can be still be safe for human consumption. So how does this affect? Balik tayo doon sa four phases of, ano natin, four phases of bacterial development. Now, if there are low initial numbers, it will result to longer lag. Because, kaunti lang, paano sila mag-start na padami kasi, Konti lang, konti lang talaga sila. And longer lag results to um, longer log and 
if we are able to inhibit it from developing sa lab, there is no store, there is no stationary phase. Remember, when the food, when the contaminants on the food is already on stationary phase, the food is already um, spoiled. So again, the initial numbers it is an important factor for longer keeping time or longer storage time of food. Second factor is temperature. So, it has been said that temperature has the greatest effect in the growth rate of bacteria in food. So, you have to take note that most foodborne illnesses or most foodborne pathogens or microbes grow between negative 5 to 80 degrees Celsius. So, this, this range actually is a product of the thermolability of bacterial proteins. So, when you subject bacteria into unfavorable conditions, i.e. you cook them or you freeze them, you actually alter the structure of their proteins, so inhibiting their functions. So, temperature is important in prolonging the lag, the lag phase and inhibiting the lag phase because they affect bacterial viability, which is a product again of the thermolability of bacterial proteins. So, that is why we cook them, we cook food, aside from making it easier to digest, we cook food to kill microbes. And that is why, in order to preserve food, we, at, at, at this age and time, we put food in the refrigerator. So, refrigeration and cooking are, temp, um, they, they, they add, um, bad environment they, are, they, 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 they inhibit the growth or the development of bacterial um, contaminant, contaminants or microbes in food because it makes the environment inhabitable for the microbes with regards to temperature preferences of food food, uh, food microbes you can actually classify them into five so you have recyclophile Psychotroph, mesophile, thermotolerant, and thermophile. I'm sure you're pretty much familiar with this. Just review your micro one lessons. So, among psychrophiles, of course, these are the ones that like very, very cold, very cold environments. So, from negative um, zero to 20 degrees Celsius. So, medyo malamig lamig din. With an optimal temp of around less than um, negative 15 degrees Celsius. So, that is mga uh, refrigerator temperature. So an example of microbes that is is medium elegance. So this is a problem for frozen food and those that are in chillers or in freezer units. So kasi nga gusto nila ng malamig. Psychotropes on the other hand are gusto pa din nila ng malamig. Medyo malamig lamig but not necessarily frozen um, frozen temperatures or freezer temp rather. So, they can survive from minimum of 0 to 7 degrees Celsius to a maximum of more than 25 degrees Celsius with a preferred temp of, again, chiller or refrigerator temperature. So, it's an example of this are important foodborne pathogens like Listeria monocytogenes, Yersinia interpolitica, lactic acid bacteria, which are a problem for chilled food. Next, we have your mesophiles. Ito sila yung med with regards to medium, medium temp, medium temp preference, um, mesophiles, wherein they're, they're, they can live actually in near freezer, near freezer temp, near freezing temp rather, with a maximum of around 40, 40, more than 45 degrees Celsius, but they prefer normal body temp, 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. So room temp to normal body temp. And these are the group that contains the most important foodborne pathogens. Um, we are the largest group of foodborne microbes. We have Staphylococcus aureus. Examples include Staph aureus, E. coli, Salmonella, Shigella, and other Enterobacteriaceae. So these are problems in food that are left on counters of tables. So room temp again, they're they're optimum temp is room temp to body temp so stored at ambient temperature thermotolerant um bacteria on the other hand um or thermotolerant yeah are these are problems for pasteurized food because they are able to um survive pasteurization so we will this we will be discussing more pasteurization when we reach 
na yung hygiene of milk, milk and milk products. So, what are these that are that are able a uh, thermotolerant microbes, so mga spores and other bacteria and fungi. Again, um, thermophile, ito na yung sila on the extreme end of the psychophile. They, they actually prefer um, feverish temperatures, so more than 37 degrees Celsius, with a maximum of around 45 degrees Celsius. So, Clostridium is one of them. Clostridium botulinum or the botulinum producer of botulinum toxin. So, which is a problem in canned foods. So, this is a further, ano, further discussion on temperature. So, thermophiles, and yung mga mainit. For example, um, Bacillus that belong to this category is Bacillus species, they cause flat souring of canned food. Clostridium, and uh, another species is Thermosaccharolyticum, they cause gaseous spoilage of canned food. So when you see a canned good na may usle, usle sa taas or usle sa baba, that could probably be gaseous spoilage due to Clostridium or other anaerobe, um, path, anaerobe contaminant on the food. So, sa mesophiles naman, again, they are the largest group and contain most of the pathogenic bacteria like uh, members of the bacteria bacteria chain. So, E. coli, salmonella, and salmo uh, salmonella, salmonella. Psychotropes, problem, again, they are problem of food that are stored in freezer. So, they are normally found in soil and water vegetation. And they are the main component, you have to remember that, again, we store meat in freezers most of the time. Right? So they are the main component of meat spoilage flora. So these include your Pseudomonas, your Moraxella, Acetinobacter, Lactobacillus, and Macrobacterium. So, no, they are not psycho psychotrophs. So their them is them. So they can grow near freezing tank, but their growth is slow. But regardless, they are able to survive. So that is a problem when you improperly store your meat. So do take note that if you are going to store meats in other flesh type food like mga fish and others, um, processed meat for example, um, you need to be wary of growth of mesophiles. So again, coliforms or enterobacterial shape, clostridium, staph, and others that grow on body temp. They grow best on body temp of car mga car newly, um, newly slaughtered animals na mainit-init pa yung katawan, that's what we say. So, in order for them to be inhibited, their growth to be inhibited, you need to chill them immediately at, like, at less than 8 degrees Celsius. Because at below degree, 8 degrees Celsius naman, you have to be also careful because you, you may inhibit the growth of mesophiles, you are also favoring the growth of psychophiles and psychotrophs. Um, they, they may grow slowly but then again, they are able to spoil food. So, what's the main, the main takeout here? You need to chill your meat quickly at less than 5 degrees Celsius. So, important is, important, it is important to maintain low temp in storage, processing, packaging, and transport. That is why, in transporting meat, it should be transported in chilled vats. So aside from temperature, moisture is also an a factor that affects bacterial growth in food. So much like other biologic systems or much like other living organisms, bacteria also need water. So in food safety or food hygiene, we take into account water activity or the AW. Basically, it is a measure of available water in food articles, available water for the bacteria to use. So when the AW is lower, the number of bacterial uh, the, the, the growth of bacteria is inhibited more likely. So, increase in bacterial growth inhibition as the water activity goes down. So, how does this work? For example, you lower, so in order to food, um, to keep food safe or to lower, excuse me, to inhibit the development of bacterial contaminants, you need to lower the water activity because you need to lower the available limit the availability of water for bacterial physiology. So you salt water because water binds to the salt. So you salt or grind it. You add sugar to water. Um, so um, that's why there is syrup. The syrup in the fruit cocktail does not only make it 
um, does not only make it sweet but also um, inhibits bacterial growth because it lowers the water activity. Freezing is an important part here because when, of course, when H2O or water is frozen, the bacteria cannot access or use it. So, definitely, wala nang. If it's totally frozen, wala nang. What, the activity, water activity is very, very low. So, bacterial inhibition is increased. That's why also, with, the, uh, with regards naman to kitchen practices, that's why you need to wipe yung mga cooking utensils or yung mga cooking utensils or mga cubiertos and whatever that you use for cooking and eating, that's why you have to wipe it down um, after washing because you need to lower the water activity that is uh, lower, lower the water activity and lower the availability of water that may um, help the bacteria to grow. So aside from um, water activity, pH is also a factor. So of course, acidity and alkalinity, alam niyo naman yan from yung pH, yung pH meter natin. So, growth is affected by the pH medium. So basically, most foodborne microbes are actually, actually prefer um, near neutral pH, so near 7, so 4 to 8 and near 7. And below 6, which becomes slightly acidic to very acidic, growth actually stalls. That is why we pickle food. So, my, one of my favorite pickled food is achaga. And you have to be, know, you have to be very careful, I guess, na when, because low acid food um, require higher meat treatment. Next is the gaseous environment within which the food and the microbe is exposed to. So of course, we we, classi we can classify the bacteria, the foodborne, the food microbes into four categories. You have your obligate aerobes. Of course, these are the ones that are able to grow um, with the presence of oxygen. Obligate anaerobes, so they prefer no oxygen at all. Facultative anaerobes, they are they prefer the they prefer atmosphere that are devoid of oxygen. But it, but un, but are also able to grow at a reduced rate in the presence of oxygen. So they are any they are anaerobes, but they all, they also can grow in a limited rate in the presence of oxygen. So you have your aerotolerant anaerobes or the microaerophilic. These are they prefer reduced oxygen concentrations. Okay, sila sa oxygen, but they are also not necessarily inhibited pag walang oxygen. So, with regards to foodborne pathogens, aerobes, obligate aerobes, an example is your sodomonas. For an aerobes, you have your clostridium. Clostridium, again, clostridium is a problem in canned foods where there is no oxygen in the, in the environment inside the canned good. Facultative anaerobes, you have your lacto, lactobacillus. And for your microaerophilic naman, um, you have your Salmonella, Campylobacter, and E. coli. So again, because of the preference of certain species of food microbes to certain gaseous environments, we actually take advantage of this and manipulate the, cons the conditions to preserve food. So of course, for canned goods, siyempre saradong sarado yan, there are no air, there, of course, there are no, they're devoid of oxygen or devoid of atmosphere, actually or devoid of oxygen. That's why when you open the canned good, minsan may, there's, may there's a hissing sound. So again, no aerobe will be able to survive that because the can is completely sealed. But do take note that an aerobes may thrive. So for example, again, is your post medium which may cause yung pag-bump ng unopened cans, may mga bumps, may mga elevation sa takit. Um, yeah. Or, for example, is your vacuum sealed meats or vacuum sealed with, oxid, with carbon dioxide. So again, it limits the growth of aerobes such as pseudomonas, but facultative anaerobes such as lactobacillus or microbacteria may actually thrive. So again, kaya minsan, in vacuum sealed food, ang una mong naaamoy pag sira na siya is the sour smell because of the anaerobic fermentation of and aerobes. 
So what happens ba when anaerobic bacteria cause spoilage? So often, spoiled food caused by aerobic bacteria development is a, uh, actually has surface line. So it may be caused by Pseudomonas, Lipinostoc, Bacillus, Alkalogenes, and Micrococcus. So temperature and availability of moisture influenced by influence the kind of organism that is causing the surface line. Next, you have change in color and of meat pigments. So the production of oxidizing agents causes change in red color of meat to shades of green, brown, gray, or caused by bacteria like Lactobacillus or Pseudomonas. Red color of meat sometimes nagiging bloom yung it becomes more red or the bloom. The species like Lactobacillus yoconosto causes greening of the sausages. So, do be careful nung mga sausages that are encased in intestine, intestine casing. Um, changes in fat. So, oxidation of unsaturated fat uh, meat takes place chemically or in air. Um, so, some ba bacteria actually has lipolytic um, capability. So, they are able to break down lipids and um, um, they are able to break down lipids that causes the, the presence or yung byproduct na pag break down ng lipids are aldehydes and acids. That's why naangamoy ang meat. Minsan, amoy maasim ang meat. And this could be due to lipolytic bacteria like Pseudomonas or Acromobacter. Next is phosphorescence. So, very uncommon naman ito na nagiging UV, UV, UV fluorescent ang bacteria but photobacterium photobacterium species may be able to do it and next ito na i think the, this is the most common with regards to meat is this various changes in color due to pigmented bacteria so sometimes the red spot is caused by serratia morsicens blue color can be attributed to pseudomonas yung mga yellow pigments yung mga yellow yellow yellowish to brown could be due to micrococcus or flavobacterium the greenish to brownish black could be due to chromobacterium lividum and yung purple something ink na discoloration ng fat could be due to um, the yellow pigment of the cocci or the rods and of course um, of odors and taste so taints as previously mentioned yun nga, uh, changes with regards to taste and color or taste or odor rather are often described as taints could be due to spoilage of aerobic bacteria and as it, if, if, if your meat often has musty or earthy flavor, it could be due to actinomycetes um, contamination. So for anaerobic bacteria naman, of course, it becomes sour. Sabi ko nga, uh, it is due to anaerobic fermentation. So it could be due to formic acetic deuteropropionic and other fatty acids. Um, a concern, this is a concern for vacuum pack meats. Yun na, as explained kanina. Then, also a problem for improperly sealed cans. And souring can result from action of meat. It could actually be due to the action of meat. Again, um, your meat, pag napapagod na yung meat, it actually produces um, a normal in living animals sa lactic acid, right? And it also be due to anaerobic production of fatty acids by the bacteria during ripening. Then, proteolysis or, uh, proteolysis or putrefaction ng mga meat um, proteins due to anaerobic bacteria can actually, do to, can actually produce the stinking sour fermentation smell. So next, you have putrefaction. So true putrefaction is the anaerobic, anaerobic decomposition of protein with the production of foul smelling compounds. So this is usually due to the um, Clostridium species that are contaminants. But also take note that other species of, of Pseudomonas and Alkaligens are also able to putrefact, to enable, enable to do putrefaction on meat proteins. So when you, took into, when you take into consideration the Clostridium species that are contaminants in canned goods, they produce gases. Kaya nga yung Sometimes, yung gaseous spoilage ng canned goods are actually attributed to clostridium. And pag yun na yung nangyari, pag bukas mo ng lata na may nakausli, may nakausli na takit, mabahong mabaho, that is due to putrefaction of um, food proteins that are part of them. Next, you have your taint. So, syempre, mabaho siya, mabaho yung lasa. Mabaho siya, 
ay mabaho din yung odd. Ang uh, mabaho, siya maba pangit din yung lasa. So, of taint or uh, of taint could be due uh, taint can be used to refer of tastes or of odors. So, ayun na. The term bone taint is applied to souring or putrefaction. Then, true putrefiers require temperature above those of the refrigerators or more than um, more than 8 degrees, more than 5 to 8 degrees Celsius. So, again, um, I hope you have learned in this very, perhaps very long lecture, um, a video lecture about our intro to food hygiene and safe, food safety and hygiene and microbes in food. So, I would like to remind you that please do read on the topics that discussed here, that were discussed here, on the references that I gave you and write your notes. Because, I mean, as you, as we usually do, um, I will require you to send your, uh, send or submit your notes at the end of the semester. And might as well do your notes now because in about two to three years time, you will be taking the boards. So, compile all your notes from all your subjects now. So, just a reminder from me. So, thank you very much for your attention and have a good day.